All right, ready, set, go. <laughs> John Schroll, crap, I shouldn't have said your name. I mean, the Mount Michael mullet is here on our, you like that name? No. You don't like that name? I thought you liked that name. That's the first time you've ever called me that. Are you serious? I guess I call it to you. Only I only say it behind your back, I suppose. Um, so we'll just um, go with John Troll. This is John Troll. He's here for our latest Ordinary Holiness interview. But um, maybe you don't know who John Troll is. John Troll, who are you? Uh, my name's John Troll. Uh, I'm 19. I just graduated from Mount Michael. Uh, I'll be going to UNL next year to study uh, – elementary education and then hopefully enter law enforcement after that um awesome. yeah what what's the connection between those i've, I've heard you say that a couple times and i never asked the question you know between so you're going to study elementary education and it seems like you'll be working with kids in a nice safe environment and then all of a sudden you're going to flip over to this like potentially hopefully not kids in a potentially hazardous environment where's the connection there uh so Everyone who's who I've talked to, they all say don't get a criminal justice degree because it's not too helpful. And if you end up not liking law enforcement, you don't got anything to go into. And so with elementary education, one, I'll have a backup plan if I need it. And then uh, they suggest either education or business uh, kind of degree. And so I went with education because uh, some of the classes that you take, uh, like psychology and then also like family structure classes and that kind of stuff will help you deal with uh, certain situations that you might come across in the future. Awesome. That makes a lot of sense. Um, I, that was really perplexed by that, but now I'm just like, oh, this makes perfect sense. And then I kept looking at you and I was like, why is it getting closer to his face? Is something zooming in? And then I realized that your, your camera like flipped backwards and looked at the sky. The joys of COVID Zoom calls. This is awesome. Um, that seems to make sense to me. How about your, uh, how about this? You know, ever since I've known you, you I kind of met you maybe when you were a freshman, so maybe like four years ago or so. I, I knew your aunt, Carrie. I knew your mom a little bit too. Um, but you've always kind of seemed to be a pretty faithful kid, always someone who was kind of going to all the retreats, going to the youth group things. What got you on fire for Jesus? What kind of got you maybe like maybe like one moment in middle school or high school, maybe a couple things? What got you motivated for Jesus? Um, I'd say the biggest thing uh, that, I, that I could pinpoint would probably be uh, summer camp purchase at Veritas. Uh, I, let's see, the first year I went was the summer after my seventh grade year. Uh, and then uh, Camp V2, it, it's a really awesome camp for uh, boys. And it's, uh, it's a leadership camp. And then also uh, you do different things like uh, you pray a lot, but then you it's also balanced with a lot of um, uh, like physical activity. Um, there's lots of uh, uh, there's lots of people from all over Omaha, and uh, some people are out farther. And then uh, I mean, it's just it's a great camp that you get to meet a lot of boys. You get to hear lots of experience, uh, different experiences from dads and seminarians. And then uh, there's lots of prayer. They uh, there's some uh, talks from father, and then there's there's just lots of different things that. Uh, that help you, that give you a chance to experience Jesus in a different way or in uh, just, you know, through other people and that kind of thing. And you said you've gone there. How, how many years have you gone there? Um, I've gone five years now. Five years. So the, like this last year, they didn't have it, but that this last summer, that would have been your sixth time, right? Last year was not. Yeah. Yep. It would have been the sixth time. That's where uh, I would have gotten back home yesterday Dang. if we would have had it this year. Bummer, dude. I mean, I went, I've gone out there a couple of times and it seems like it's awesome. I mean, I feel like I was sitting here right now. So, so if you want to support V2, please, please click the, 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 not the Venmo, but the um, Patreon, <laughs> please click the Patreon link below. Send your stuff to Toby Kerensky over at St. Stephen's. Like we're doing some kind of advertisement for him. But then when I went out there and saw a couple of you guys, that's where I first met your mom actually too. Cause I thought she looked exactly like Carrie Benish. I was like, Whoa, who is this lady looks exactly like Carrie Bittish. And it's like, oh, it happens to be her twin sister, Christy Schroll. So I was super um, impressed by going out there. You know, you had like the mudslides, the gaga ball, the um, the archery, these these crazy games you guys are playing. But it's a lot of men, a lot of young men gathered around growing in holiness, growing in masculinity. You, like you said, you had those great examples of like, like the coolest priests you can think of are out there. You know, you guys get to know those guys. You're seeing cool dads out there. 
So, you know, cool fathers, both physical and spiritual. And then the archbishop comes out and you get to take a big fat picture with him and he offers the mass. So it seems like an action packed weekend. And I have heard a lot of people talk really positively about it. Mm -hmm. And that seems to be like, that's, that was kind of like your moment when you were just like, yeah, this is, this is for real. I'm all in on this stuff. huh? Yep. Awesome. Um, you know, you mentioned prayer and that being a big part of V2. So sometimes when we go to these extraordinary events like V2, it's always hard to kind of bring those things back into the ordinary every day. You know, it's kind of hard to be like, okay, I went to V2 and I had a great time, but how does that translate to the ordinary? And that's kind of what this, this little interview is about. So how have you seen, since you kind of got on fire for Jesus, how have you seen prayer, for example, come to life in your everyday life? Um, so in a couple of different ways. Uh, the first one, the biggest way, uh, so it was, would have been uh, my freshman year, uh, the summer after my freshman year of high school. Uh, during that summer camp, uh, so you go to mass every single day, and uh, I don't know something. I think uh, something. I just felt the Holy Spirit that week, and uh, that inspired me to uh, start going to daily mass uh, as often as I could, especially during the school year, uh, because you know Mount Michael. I go to Mount. I went to Mount Michael, and so uh, daily mass was offered before school every day. And so uh, that's something that I would do. I'd uh, go to daily mass as often as I could. And then um, uh, the other thing, uh, some smaller things that, uh, that just help strengthen your prayer life uh, are uh, like at the camp, uh, we pray a rosary every day. We do, you know, we pray in the morning, we pray at night, we pray uh, uh, the Divine Mercy Chapel at three. And so uh, one of the, I, I don't do all of that stuff but uh, coming from that camp, they just kind of, you know, uh, push you to just try doing like one of those things. You know, the first thing you uh, to do when you wake up is say a prayer or something or right before you go to bed or something. And so I always I've always seen myself uh, <clears throat> uh, coming when I come back is just trying to implement like one new thing or something like that, because uh, you, you never you never want to go try to go too big right away and so it's always you know try something one or two new things uh, and get moving from there yeah that's a great point man so you're as you've gone these you, you know you went five years and your goal is to just take like one thing to add to my daily life which kind of goes against what america says i guess america when you said go big i mean in, Amer in my mind america says go big or go home you know like like go to the maximum or don't do it at all but this takes a different approach where it's saying okay instead of trying to do everything all at once overwhelming yourself and falling flat on your face. Let's just add one new thing. Let's add one stone on top of the other stone, one brick on top of the other brick. And before you know it, you've got a nice sturdy foundation to a, a, a prayer life. Huh? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So you mentioned things like the Divine Mercy Chaplet, the, uh, the rosary, morning prayer. Would you guys ever do, I don't know if this is true and you can say no, don't feel bad about shutting me down on here, but would you guys ever do the Liturgy of the Hours at all when you were there or no? Um, we might have done them once or twice, but not, uh, not like, consistently, not you. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, you mentioned, um, the next one, you know, we have prayer is one of those five things we talk about on here. There's also sacraments and you mentioned this, you mentioned going to mass, you know, you went to mass every day at KFV two, And you said, Hey, I go to Mount Michael. Mount Michael's got seven fifteen, I think mass. Is that right? Yep. Seven fifteen. Seven fifteen. So you're like, Hey, I might as well just show up to school a little early, go to mass. Um, why, don't we, why don't you talk a little bit about that, that decision like, and, and how that came about and how you've succeeded maybe and failed, and then we'll dive into another one of these ordinary sacramental opportunities of reconciliation after that. But first, um, the Eucharist, how has, how has that gone you know, when you decided to go to Mass every day? Um, it was pretty good. Uh, it's, it wasn't difficult because, I mean, you just have to – I was already getting to school at maybe 7.30, and so, you know, getting there 15 more – 15 minutes earlier was it too bad yeah and then um i mean it's it's just probably like everything else anyone's ever done some days it's easy some days it's difficult um sophomore year wasn't too bad uh i mean it was it was pretty easy for me to get going to mass and then junior year uh was a little bit rougher um i don't really remember quite why, why but uh my daily mass attendance was up and down during the weeks and then um but then senior year was a lot better because I got an accountability part uh, partner, uh, Parker Hadavi. Um, he was going. 
he was uh, going with me to mass every morning. And so that definitely made it easier because, you know, we'd have that uh, other person, uh, you know, texting the texting them the night before saying, Hey, we got, we got to get to mass. And so that definitely uh, helped. Awesome. Yeah. I think that's, I, I think I noticed that too. And we've talked about it occasionally, you know, with your sophomore year, when you first really started getting involved here at St. Pat's, I'm like, man, it's John Strolls. He's a, he's a killer, man. He's going after it. He's getting everything done. He's going to mass all the time. And then there was something that happened in your junior year. Like you said, who knows what it was, but it was where like, I don't know, maybe some outside, outside things took play. And, and it was just like, you know, in, not that you lost fervor or anything like that. Maybe things were just harder, or, but that's the reality of everybody's life. You know, there's certain times when your when your prayer life, your sacramental life, are off the charts, and sometimes where it just isn't. You know, but it's it's awesome to see you bounce back because not every kid bounces back from stuff like that. I've seen many students during their junior year, particularly, um, find themselves in the midst of struggles, and they don't always find their way back. But like you're saying, hey, I found an accountability partner, somebody to keep me accountable to keep me in the direct going in the direction that I wanted to go, even when I didn't necessarily have all the motivation to go that way. So that's very cool, man. Um, how about, how about reconciliation? I don't know if you're a guy that likes reconciliation, hates reconciliation. Um, there's always, you, know, you get one of every kind, but what do you think about reconciliation? How has that been in your life? I love reconciliation. Um, it's probably one of my favorite sacraments. Awesome. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I'd say, uh, it was since uh, grade school. Uh, in grade school, they made us go uh, once a once a month, and so that really got me started on it. And then um, throughout high school, um, I've learned a lot more about it, and especially the uh, you know the just the feeling that you get when you're done, and that you know just knowing that that you don't have to worry about that the sins that you had, and mm -hmm. so. Um, that's some, I mean, yeah, I, I love going to reconciliation because uh, it's, it's, it's really the, the best thing that you can do for your soul. And uh, just, there's no judgment there at all. Uh, you know, it's, it, it really shows you Jesus loves you and doesn't care just, you know, how bad you can be. It's Jesus always loves you. And so awesome. that's something that I've always found um, great faith in and stuff. So. Would you say, you know, you, you mentioned that when you were in grade school, people went every single month to give you that opportunity to go to reconciliation. And do you think that that frequency that you went, you know, where you were going pretty regularly, I think that many of our students maybe go twice a year, once a year. Do you think that that going regularly helped you to become more comfortable with it as opposed to, to going, you know, more sporadically? Yeah, uh, definitely. Uh, the more you do it, the more you the more you're used to it and so yeah. uh I mean it's it's a lot easier to uh you know say what you did wrong and to really think about it um I know one of the things that helped me a lot was one of the retreats that that we went uh that we went on uh you are loved uh Alex handed out uh an examination of conscience and uh it was like it was pretty in depth it was probably one of the best ones I I read and so I I still have that one and so one of the best thing, one of the biggest things for reconciliation is really examining your conscience and knowing and, you know, like really pointing out what you did wrong. And there were uh, on this, uh, the examination that he gave us, there was actually like a list of different things and all that kind of stuff. And so like beforehand, I'd, I'd circle things, I'd write stuff down. And then like that, that really it points, this is what I did wrong and this is what I need to change and stuff. That's a great, maybe, maybe it's all about, you know, just feeling, feeling prepared and not necessarily comfortable, but, but as, as well prepared as possible. You know, when you're talking about going frequently, you know, you're, you're getting used to being ready for it. It's not a shock to your system. It's not like you haven't done this before. It's a place that you're, that you're somewhat comfortable. I mean, when you're talking about some of these in-depth things, you want to do it in a place that you're comfortable. So if you're walking in this confessional for the first time in a year, probably not going to be comfortable or well-practiced at it. And also with the examination of conscience, if you're, if you, if you're well prepared for that confession that way, if you're, if you, if you've gone through these different things, you know, and you're, in your in your like, Hey, these are the things I've done. I'm ready to say them. I'm, 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 I'm remorseful. You're just, you're just well prepared as possible. So it's, there's less anxiety in there. Although there's, when you're saying these kind of things, these mortal sins, they're mortal for a reason. Then there's always going to be a little anxiety there, but that's, that's mm -hmm. two fantastic points. I don't think we've had anybody say on here. So I'm glad you brought that up. You know, you said, this is your favorite sacrament, one of your favorites, and you totally delivered on that. So good one. Um, 
Next question, we're going to talk about charity. So, you know, loving others, loving God. You've got a lot of people in your family. Um, you got, uh, you're one of six, right? One of six kids. I know a few of those kids and um, I can think of some of them that might get on your nerves sometimes. And I can think of some of them that you might get on their nerves actually. Um, so tell me, you know, especially when it comes to like loving your family or like, or those that are closest to you, how have you found yourself, um, I guess, taking up that challenge or growing in that virtue of charity, like, like loving other people around you? What does that look like? Can you ask that again? <laughs> yeah, I will. I was like, I'm going to stump this guy on this question. So, so charity is something where we're, we're looking to love the other person for the other person's sake. Where I've got these people in my life. And, you know, I was reading the Bible today. What credit is it to you if you love someone who loves you? Like, that's easy to do. It's easy to love somebody who loves you. But sometimes when it comes to our family, we don't always love them. It can be difficult. Mm -hmm. And you've got yeah. a lot of folks in your family that it's very difficult to love. So how do you find yourself, like, when you're dealing with your family, putting yourself second and putting those around you first? And, and you don't have to say it in the positive, too, if you're like, hey, man, I'm terrible at that. I walk around the mm -hmm. stroke thinking about myself all day long where I'm not thinking about other people. You can say that. You, it can be one that you struggle with. You don't have to be 100% on everything. But how do you find yourself struggling or succeeding at the, that virtue of charity? Well, I know that I, I can think of times where both I, I struggle and succeed. Um, I guess the best way that uh, I try to succeed is, you know, I just try and remember it's and we, I live in a big family, and so everyone does have to do their part in order to, uh, to make the family work and uh, function well. And so, uh, I mean, it's as long as we're all doing our part that we can, uh, I'd say we're, you know, that's the best we can do. And so, uh, and when I, whenever I see myself succeeding in charity, it's definitely because um, I will try and help my siblings. And, you know, when someone yells that they need help or something, you know, I'll I'll put my phone down and, and go help them. And then, uh, I mean, I do know I, I do fail sometimes uh, when, uh, you know, someone is yelling that they need help, but <laughs> you're mad at them from an hour earlier, you know, you don't yeah. really want to help them. And so I, I do know that I do that sometimes, but, you know, it's, I guess it, it goes both ways. What do you think? I, think, I, think, I like that you said that, like that thing, like we all have to do our part. You know, everybody's different. We all have different gifts. If you looked at the Schroll family, so it's got eight people in it, right? And everyone's got their own different part. Everyone's got their own different gifts and talents. Where would you see, what would, what would you see as John Schroll's part? And, and you can say like different, different like tasks, you know, like maybe you're the dishes guy or the, or the food guy or the trash guy or the homework guy or something. It can be, it can be tasks. Maybe you, you can think bigger than that or like, yeah, what would you say is your part in the family? Um, I'm definitely a helper and uh, a leader. Uh, while I'm not the oldest, I am often put in charge because, uh, no offense to my other siblings, but I do listen to everyone else a little bit better. Okay. Uh, and I, like when we're, when the whole family's home and we have to clean the basement or something, it's, I'm usually put in charge so that, uh, and then uh, I just had a lot of, of, you know, those, I've been to a lot of different things that help teach you leadership and those kind of things. And so I am a little bit more prepared than my older sisters for it and okay. uh, no offense to them. I, I listen better than they do. And so when we're working in a big group, I can usually handle it and uh, get everyone to work together a little bit better. And then, so I, I'd, I'd say that's where I see myself the most Fantastic. and then also helping out a lot. Um, I sense, uh, well, right now, right now I'm the second oldest kid at home. And so I do have a lot of responsibility, especially, uh, when something needs to be done or picked up from the store, uh, mom does expect me to do it. And so, uh, you know, I'll have to do that kind of stuff. Awesome. And I love that too, man. You know, sometimes I think today people think of like these household chores or, or responsibilities or something like they maybe get like an allowance for or something like, like what's, what's in it for me, you know, but like seeing somebody mm -hmm. now, now I'm sure that if people watch this that are in your family, they're like, Oh man, John's terrible at that. Like, he's just lying right now. That's false. You know, like I can see Mary being, or Mark being like, this is ridiculous, dude. John's a bum. Sometimes maybe true, but you know, but seeing that you're striving to be that person, okay, where do I fit in on this? You know, you're an Eagle Scout. So you've had these leadership opportunities. 
And how can I, how can I help us as a team work together? How can I just be obedient to my mom and just listen to her? Because that's what I do. That's what we do as a family. I'm not nothing in it for me, like monetarily, or I'll give you a treat or a snack. I'll give you a cookie if you do it. But just, this is my job. This is what I'm going to do as an obedient son in the Stroll mm -hmm. family. Fantastic example. That's exactly what I was looking for, man. Um, fourth one is going to be about um, mortification. So, so denying ourselves. And, and that does go along with what we just talked about. You know, okay, you can't be on your phone all the time. You can't always do what you want to do in a big family. You don't get all the opportunities. But I think that I've heard you say in the past that you take on some more, and I'll, I'll go this route with the mortification stuff, like some penitential um, things. You know, we talk about Lent. You know, people like to give up chocolate or give up uh, candy or pop. Um, what's your experience in that realm, not only during Lent, but throughout the whole year? Do you find yourself um, offering up certain penances for other people or for your own soul or for your own growth and virtue, et cetera? Um, I will say I try to do my best during Lent. I, I usually try and give up, you know, more than one or two things to really try and push myself. And then uh, I guess not during Lent, uh, the, I guess the most I really try and do is uh, stay off my phone uh and you know just trying to uh who is that who is that which one is that it's parker mark oh it's mark oh geez yeah. man maybe he should just peek in so we can see his face and then he can be like okay i was seen and he can get his butt out of here is he nah, still there? Oh, yeah um exactly. so you said get off your phone huh yeah uh i will say i i go on my phone too much and so that's something i try and stay off of um I had something else in my head until Mark walked in. Man, Mark, Mark always, man, you ruined everything. Mark, it's always your fault. I, I noticed that. that. Go ahead. That, that was what I remember. So me and Mark have to share a car. And so one of the things I, I'll do is I'll have my friends drive me and let him take the car. Mm. Even though, you know, I really don't like that. But. Man, holiness right there. You're giving up that freedom a little bit, huh? Yeah. That's good. I will say I do take my, well, not. I do take the car sometimes when it's like when we both have something going on, I will claim yeah. seniority. Yeah. But I mean, it goes both ways. Yeah. So. Good. I think I, I noticed that from you too. You know, I remember you, I remember sitting in some meetings sometimes, um, junior year, senior year, I don't remember what it was, but you were on your phone a lot. And then you had said, you said, Hey, I'm going to try to snug out my phone as much. And I totally noticed that like you were, you were on your phone like way less, you know, I'm just like, Hey, all right, look at this guy. He's, he's backing it up. That's fantastic. So I think we could all probably use a little bit less of that. I know that even just yesterday, I'm looking at LeBron getting beat last night and it's changed. I'm just like moping around the house because LeBron lost. But I'm like, man, why am I on my phone the whole time? How, how am I, why am I not having my family engaging with them and putting, mm -hmm. putting my desires and my waste of time habits second to, to real life people in my life, you know, hanging out with good buddies and stuff like that. Um, the last one is study. Obviously you go to Mount Michael. Um, so you guys have religion classes and stuff like that, but specifically when it comes to studying your faith, you seem to be someone who's, who knows a little bit more than the average person about the faith. So, you know, thinking about like your whole high school career, what have you seen to be some of the best things you've done to grow in knowledge of like, I mean, cause the Catholic faith is, is deep, man. There's a lot of stuff to know. There's a lot of stuff folks don't know. How have you come to have such a knowledge for the faith? Um, well, I'd say it started with school. Uh, you learn, you know, the basics. And then uh, as you get older, you learn a little bit more. But then a lot of it came from doing the different groups that I've been involved in, uh, like SALT. Uh, just we will talk about things and then Father Patrick will bring up a church teaching or something. And then uh, that based on what we're talking about and then go into that. And so I'd say that's probably one of the bigger ways that I've learned about things is yeah. that in the different groups will be discussing like a worldly issue. And then uh, someone brings up an actual church teaching that, you know, like I hadn't heard of before or something, and then like explain what it has to do with everything and all that kind of stuff. And so I'd lear I've learned from then, from there. And then also um, uh, I've watched some videos and listened to some podcasts. I don't do that as much, mm -hmm. but then also um, I like to read a lot of books about like, the cool saints and well all the things are cool but you know yeah, some yeah. a lot of the saints and stuff and and then also uh from b2 uh they do some a lot of teaching there and so i've learned a lot of different things from there as well so a lot of like interacting with other people you know at, at these various yeah. places that you're at 
you know, just kind of yeah. like prying into the minds of some of these smart guys, like Father Moser, you mentioned, yeah, and the, the priest that V2. Talking about. Yeah, those are the people I've, I've probably learned from the most. Awesome. Uh, they just, yeah, whenever they're just sharing information, that's when I try and learn it. Awesome. Um, all right, last question. So the, the first time I ever met you, um, your aunt was like, oh, my, my nephew goes to Mount Michael and we're trying to get him to come here. But I don't know, he's a little hesitant because he might not know anybody. And then uh, this guy we knew named Donovan was hitting you up all the time too. And you were just like, you were giving Donovan a hard time. Didn't want to show. Um, but then you ended up showing up and it's been, it's been great to get to know you. I've, I've really enjoyed seeing you for four years at St. Pat's. Um, but so I, I say that because sometimes when you're inviting someone to, to, to go to youth group or to V2 or to these experiences that you really like, or maybe to go to mass with you in the morning at Mount Michael, um, sometimes it's, we're not always successful. Sometimes we, we, sometimes we're successful and they, and they come with us. Sometimes they, we struggle and they don't want to hear what we have to say. So from your perspective, especially of your friends, you know, when you see people trying to interact with your friends, what are some ways that you have seen people try to expose or encourage somebody in the faith? Where have you seen that work out bad where it's been negative, but also mm -hmm. where have you seen that work positively where you've seen someone be successful in promoting the faith? especially when it comes to like the kids your age? Uh-huh. Well, it, I'd say that definitely depends. At first depends on like where they're at, you know, uh, if they do, if it's so like take someone that, you know, they grew up Catholic, they, they do what their parents tell them to, but not really more than that. Uh, you definitely have to start with something that, you know, you both connect on uh, that's non-religious, yeah. like sports or something like that. Um, it's like what you did when you had the open gym yeah. uh, last summer. And, you know, you just, you just get people to come to church, not necessarily church, but, you know, to interact with those kind of people and just have fun. And then um, I know, uh, like, you know, uh, after a couple of times just hanging out, playing basketball or something, afterwards you hit them up with, like, you want to hang out for another hour and then, you know, just go and talk and stuff. And then uh, I know that, uh, well, from what I've learned is when you're talking to people and stuff, you know, you just start by talking about, well, you just have them talk about themselves. Everyone likes to talk about themselves. And then, you know, we do. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And uh, you just, uh, you just go from there and you just kind of, you know, ask questions uh, that have to do with how that, what they're talking about, you know, talk about their family and, you know, how that affects them and all that kind of stuff. And then just slowly, uh, you know, get a deeper connection and that kind of stuff. And so I think it's, it's, it's not a fast process to yeah. really get someone, uh, you know, to, to trust you. And then also, uh, to, you know, just hey, go all in, I guess, uh, you know, it's, it's a slow, it's a slow process. You have to get people, um, you have to get people there slowly and in their own way because, um, uh, no one reacts the same way to things. So, yeah, that's a great point. You know, I think we all want that instant stuff, right? Like I'm going to talk to this kid. It's going to be a home run first pitch grand slam or something, but as opposed to what you're talking about is, Hey, get them involved in things that they like themselves, sports, which is, I mean, that's, that's V2 right there too, right? Like, Hey, come to this guy's camp. We're going to, we're going to have some fun activities. You're going to be able to let loose and get wild and be crazy, you know, but we're also going to expose you to some of these truths of the faith at a, at, you know, at an appropriate level, you know, we're not going to dunk you in the tank, you know, we're not just going to drop you in so you can't swim, but we're going to take you along slowly, which is exactly what you talked about. You know, Hey, play basketball with this guy and play a couple of times you know, one thing I heard, I've heard it in two ways. You know, one guy says, I mean, this is the one thing people say all the time, finding common ground, you know, where you guys agree. Yeah. But I heard this guy say one time, you know, build a bridge that's strong enough to carry the weight of the gospel. So if you're building this friendship with someone that's strong enough, then you're able to wheel across the heaviness of the gospel. The gospel is a very heavy thing. And as for you, like you said, to go all in, to change your life, you know, it's a very heavy thing. If your bridge is strong enough, it'll be able to bear that weight. If not, it might not work out. Wonderful. Well, all right. You don't like the Mount Michael mullet name. I um, mean, you don't go to. It's because you don't like because you don't go to Mount Michael anymore. Can you? Would you mind fluffing? You know, would you mind fluffing it up for us a little bit? People can just see it in all of its glory. Um, oh, oh, shake it. Um, well, I appreciate you bringing bringing your hair on here. I love to see it. And uh, I've enjoyed having you over here for the last four years and excited to see that you're going next year to the Catholic fraternity in Lincoln. So that'll be awesome. I'm looking forward to hearing how you get along over there. I think it'll be great. So, all right, man. Thank you very much, John. We'll see you soon. Yep. See ya. Bye.